this came up as a question in one of the working groups, and Nala showed you a few things uh, um, regarding database and how to do data integration. And uh, I put it just three slides together just to um, a few thoughts on data integration. The first thing is, uh, as you can see, it's a very active research field, and that's what I said also yesterday. So um, reading different papers, you're going to get very different approaches, um, and you really need to think through both your experimental design, which was what uh, this session uh, was about, some final thoughts from me on experimental design and study design. So that matters a lot, what type of data you have, um, and what questions you ask. So we just heard uh, from, from Kelly regarding the previous study, how sort of they came up with a nice study design by doing this nested case control um, from data that collect, were collected for different purposes, and that allowed them by modifying in some sense um, their design on the fly to answer a couple of interesting questions. So um, this is a very active research field and depends on, you know, what type of data you have, then you can do a more uh, detailed search. And for example, you may find uh, you know, how to integrate um, RNA-seq data with copy number variation, and people have developed particular techniques. Um, these days, there is a lot of interest, of course, of how you integrate gene expression, proteomic, and metabolomic data. Um, here, I just have a few papers that I have read a little bit more in detail. This was actually uh, in Nature Reviews, one of the first papers that even um, talked about integrating omics data sets. So that sort of started the literature, and this is one of the latest ones that sort of focuses on something uh, much, much more specific. But, you know, the more you, you search, uh, the more techniques you find. The other thing that uh, is kind of interesting, um, Ala discussed uh, Medscape, which is built on a Cytoscape, which is sort of a fairly... Um, um, advanced uh, visualization platform and has been developed for, for the last more than 10 years. And actually, if you go to the plugin store, so basically there is a basic platform and then there are different contributors that contribute either pieces for visualization or for analysis and so forth. And uh, so if you go to the plugin uh, store, it has even a specific category that talks about data integration apps and, you know, probably you cannot read exactly uh, what these different apps are, but basically they discuss particular ways of integrating data, in some cases using molecular networks, in some other cases uh, not uh, sort of using them. Uh, what I would like just to mention in the last uh, couple of slides is a very, very simple uh, uh, strategy that actually you can apply tonight based on all the things that we discussed. I mean, um, it comes out of a paper that I work with some people down in Texas, and we were looking at uh, breast cancer. Um, and here are the basic uh, steps. I mean, for all the biological uh, background, um, you can read the paper. But this is so something that a lot of other people are sort of uh, focusing on, on how to do the integration. Because this was a question that came up for ALA, what's sort of the correlation between metabolomics uh, and gene expression data? Um, and people have asked that question a number of years before, what's the correlation between protein expression and gene expression data, in both cases are fairly uh, low. So that's why a lot of people, it's not only us that we did, took a particular approach, uh, have started focusing on pathways. Because pathways give you this systems per perspective and uh, simplifies your data. You start integrating the data without having to look at every specific metabolite or at every specific gene, and therefore you take a more systems per point of view. So um, one of the issues that uh, um, Ala addressed, and this is an important issue for metabolomics, it's much easier to do it uh, for, for genes, is you need sort of to map the data to pathways, and um, you're aware by now of the limitations. But once you have that, essentially your different omics data sets, you can sort of organize them on these functional uh, lists. Um, in principle, uh, there are two ways to go, and in my very simple strategy, I choose um, a very simple way that integrates the, the, the data by essentially, first, once I have organized them in pathways, you can do the enrichment analysis uh, using both the tools that Tala presented and the statistical ideas underlying those tools uh, that I discussed. 
So at that point, from your different data sources, you have done enrichment having organized your data into these pathways. Um, and that's where the literature starts uh, diverting because in many of these approaches that um, papers have pitched, they would like sort of to do this pathway analysis in a much more integrated fashion, taking into consideration the interactions between the different molecular compartments. So you have your RNA-seq data, and therefore, or you have your protein data and genes and code for proteins, and you would like sort of to take that information into consideration. What we do here is we say, well, that may be too difficult, or we may not have that information. That's why, you know, what I'm pitching here is something that you can apply tonight. Once you have your pathway enrichment and scores, you just rank your pathways. So essentially, you get ranks for each of the data sources, and then you just calculate an integrated rank score. And in this case, it's better to take the geometric uh, mean. It's a bit more robust rather than um, the, the usual average. And then the last thing that you need to do, again, you have sort of a new score. Remember, like the pathway enrichment score that we discussed after lunch. So right now you have a new score that integrates your ranks. And the question is, if you get a particular value of that score, is it large or is it small? So in this case, small values are better because that means that you know, your ranks are highly ranked. If you are number one, you get a smaller integrating rank score. So and then that's where, again, these permutation test ideas come into play because uh, you know, by shuffling the ranks of your different uh, um, sources, and then calculating these integrated uh, rank scores, you can again get the sampling distribution that we discussed that comes out of the permutation test, and eventually that gives you um, a p-value. So if you ask what are, um, so in, uh, in, in our study, basically these were the data sources that we have, and actually in this particular case, this very simple strategy has some pros and cons that I'm gonna discuss on the next, uh, um, on the next slide. The good thing is that we used, uh, we had uh, both metabolomics, uh, we have metabolomics data on particular, on a whole bunch of breast cancer cell lines, and also we have metabolomic uh, data on human tumors. At the same time, we also had much gene expression data for, uh, for the tumors. And then we said, okay, there is also additional biological information, in the sense clinical information, uh, since they followed up these patients and we knew when biochemical recurrence occurred. So we first organized the data into the pathways, and in that case, essentially, you can score the pathways from your cell line data, your, the pathways, same biochemical pathways from the tumor data. Uh, you map also your gene data to the same pathways, and therefore you get another score. And then you also use... Uh, um, the pathway information, and uh, you put it in a statistical model and see whether sort of it differentiates in terms of uh, patients that uh, showed biochemical occurrence early versus late, and that also gives you an additional score. Um, so these were the four. Actually, here we had, and then we, we did this with the same pathways for some other data sets. So we had some matched. So you see, in this particular case, some of the data are matched because we are having exactly on the same set of patients. But then in this case, by this very simple strategy, you can bring um, other type of data. So here are sort of the pictures from, from the paper. Um, and here it shows exactly all the ranks that we got from, um, from the different data sources and what the results are, and especially when we looked at the most significant, the pyruvate pathway that comes up on top out of this exercise, um, you know, how it sort of differentiates paper, uh, patients, both in terms of biochemical recurrence and, and survival. Um, some of the remarks, it's very simple. On the other hand, it's very general applicable. Uh, and it can integrate very diverse data sources because in this particular case, we had uh, data on relevant cell lines for the type of breast cancers that we were looking, and also on tumors. At the same time, we had also uh, same omics data. It does not require much data, but on the other hand, there are some cons. I mean, again, there is no free lunch. It's only based on concordance. So basically, every source, once you have organized your data in these pathways, and you can do this mapping uh, accordingly, 
every source essentially votes. So either you see a high enrichment score and therefore the source says that you know, this pathway is relevant when you do this comparison or it's not that relevant. Um, so it's a very simple concordance type of score and therefore it doesn't do a very tight integration in the sense that it relies only on much data and also on the interactions between uh, the various molecular compartments. So many of the papers that are, um, and many of the approaches that are discussed um, in some of these papers is exactly how to utilize additional information that you have uh, between the molecular compartments and interactions and more network information of how the different um, uh, molecules that you are analyzing are connected in order to, to have a more informed uh, um, integration strategy. Um, and the other thing that here we didn't sort of use is any of the networks that Tyler was talking about. Here we just use the lists. We said, okay, this is a list. We treat it as a pathway. We match, put all the data on the same pathways, and we just score them. So that's why, as I said, you know, the four steps, essentially, once you utilize some of the tools that you're going to see tomorrow, uh, and you have your data, you can go ahead um, and apply it to, to your data set. Um, the, the problem is that given the fact it's based on all this concordance, um, it depends exactly which sources you integrate, um, you may see uh, clean results, or in some other case that we tried it, uh, you, the sources sort of were providing conflicting information, and in those cases then you need to start digging deeper and go with a much more sophisticated approach. So, as I've said, inter data integration, especially of different omics uh, sources, is one of the hottest topics, and um, you know, hopefully we're going to see many more things uh, in the literature. All right, I think it's really late, and maybe we need to switch to the Q and A.